Hello friends and fellow creators, I'm Eric Quinn and today I'm going to be trying out some art supplies that I got on clearance. I am really excited about these because you know art supplies can get really expensive. I really want to get into inks and watercolors so I found some brushes and pens to kind of expand my reach there. I wanted to find some materials to work with that wouldn't break the bank because I didn't even know if this was a medium that I wanted to devote a lot of time to so I was really happy to find some really cheap art supplies. The first thing I'm really excited to try are these Art Advantage watercolors. They were only a dollar and so even though I spent a little more on the ceramic art palette and the brush itself, I'm really excited to try this. And then online I saw this artist that drew a dragon pretty much in one brush stroke with some bamboo paint brushes, I believe, so I kind of got them all. Um, <laughs> But I did get about seven brushes for like five dollars total, so I'm really excited about these. One of them even has a nib on it that I can, you know, do calligraphy work in. And speaking of calligraphy, I also got these markers in three colors. These were only two fifty, and I'm hoping to create some brush tip fonts and things like that for Photoshop and Illustrator. I'm really stoked about these. I also got a refillable fountain pen and ink eraser. I don't know how you erase ink but that is what I got and this thing was $1.75 so now I can actually use my inks as much as I want. I have these refillable cartridge so I'm really stoked about this. These are usually really expensive so I was happy to find it. I don't care that it's pink. These were only $1.50 when blending markers are usually like $7 so they're from a brand called Hashtag Coloring but they're literally just like alcohol markers to blend your Prismacolors and Copics. I'm really hoping that they meet my expectations because I'm really excited about them. I haven't invested money in getting one of the blending markers because they're just so expensive. Um, so I've been just like blending with a really light gray marker in hopes that it makes the same effect. This is going to be awesome, I hope. And it came with two, so that's cool. One of the things I'm most excited about is this Prismacolor marker set. I am familiar with this product. I actually owned this whole kit before, but I spent like $30 on it. This was only $7.50, so I'm like, is there something wrong with it? Hopefully not, because the brush tip in this set is my favorite marker ever. I used my last one until it died. And I also found some drawing pads. You know how expensive paper can get. So these were only a dollar. The small one's a dollar, the big one's two dollars, and it's just really nice slick black paper that I can use bright mediums on and get some cool effects. And this one is specifically for colored pencil. It's really really slick flat paper so it doesn't have a tooth to it really. It's like really good for blending and the cool part about this notebook is that you can take out the pages and put them back in. So you can actually take out your paper that you're going to work on and then put it back in the book when you're done, which I find to be a really cool feature. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to try out are these Art Advantage watercolors. I've only ever used palette watercolors, something like this. So this is going to be a new experience for me, but I think I'm just going to try to go for a quick sunset here. I'm just going to add a little dab of water each of these. I'm assuming I don't need too much. If I need more, I can add some later. And like I said, I'm no master at watercolors. This is going to be pretty much a first attempt. I'm just going to apply a thin wash of water here. The washi tape is just going to allow me to get those clean edges. And you'll see this red that I use is really, really orange, which is interesting. It's not exactly like the cadmium red that I'm used to. And you see a little bit goes a really long way. Here are my clean edges already. So the first thing I notice is that these are really transparent. And this yellow is really on the green side. What's the label say on that yellow? Um, a lemon. Definitely a lemon color. I think my number one thing with watercolor is that I'm not very patient when it comes to mediums and with acrylic you can kind of do however many passes you want not worry about really overworking the medium but with watercolor I know you're supposed to work in washes and I'm just not used to doing that yet. I think one of the main advantages to using watercolor in a tube rather than a palette is that I think I have more freedom to mix colors. In my palette I'm always worried about muddying up the palette and making it dirty. Um, so I think I have a little more freedom. I could use a large palette if I wanted to. I'm gonna go ahead and let this one dry a little bit. 
and then I'm just gonna do blue and greens on the other side. So right off the bat, I see that these colors are very atypical for like the primary colors that you get. So the red is very orange, the green is very almost like sage forest green, and the blue is very light. So they're not primaries that I'm used to. I like the color palette, it was just unexpected. I think over time I could learn to love watercolor, but I think it would definitely take some practice and I'm not sure if these $1 watercolors make the cut, but they're really good for practice and I won't be worrying about, you know, wasting materials or anything like that. I'm going to be trying out this $2 drawing pad of black paper. I'm going to be doing a few different mediums just to see how it holds up against different metallic mediums. Right off the bat I can see it's pretty thick paper and it doesn't have a lot of grit to it, which I'm excited about. I've got Artislav Acrylic Watercolor. This is uh, metallic gold and silver. So I've got both these colors here. And then I'm also gonna be trying out these metallic watercolors. I don't know how this paper is gonna hold up against this water-based medium. So I also got an acrylic-based ink to try on this. This is just FW acrylic ink in white, so I think it's really going to pop on this black background. And then I'm also going to try out just some uh, chalk pastels. These are new pastels. And not new, new. I figured I'd just kill two birds with one stone. I'm also going to try out this double-ended bamboo paintbrush. Literally a bamboo stick, so I thought this twisted off. It actually doesn't. This is just a very natural stick of bamboo, so that's really cool. And then these, I believe, are made of bamboo fibers. It's really, really rigid, which I'm not used to for a paintbrush. Like, you can't really manipulate it all too much, but it'll be really cool for hand lettering. I actually discovered these liquid watercolors on clearance at Michael's, and I'm a big fan of them. And see, with this paper, you see you lose some of the opacity at the end. I'm not sure if it's the medium or the paper, but the line doesn't really stay at the same opacity throughout the stroke. I believe it's just the type of paper that I'm using, but we'll see how it compares with the acrylic medium that I'll try next. It looks like it's drying a bit more vibrant than I would expect. It actually looks really cool on here. I would like to do like a whole portrait <laughs> in metallics on this paper. So it has about the same amount of control. Yeah, it's hard to control because it's a calligraphy brush and you definitely get the same swoop. I think it's because the brush is so rigid. Calligraphy pens are usually flexible and metal, so this is going to be very rigid. But for precision, I really, really like that. Yeah, this is unlike anything I've ever used. You would think it'd be really easy to break, but I'm putting down a lot of pressure and it's very forgiving. It's not sensitive at all. I definitely will be using this in future projects. It was only 75 cents, so I'm really stoked about it. So this is a metallic watercolor set. It is by uh, Yasutomo. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but these work really well on canvas. They're a little bit transparent though, so I wanted to see how they held up against this black paper. Can you see them in frame? Yeah. Okay. Even colors are popping really well on here, so I think I might have found the right medium for this paper. I wonder how colored pencils would do. I was curious how some dry media would work on this too. So we've got a charcoal pencil that's specifically made for this. Yeah, I definitely feel that this paper was made for chalk-based mediums because it blends really, really easily. So you can get some really nice fine detail work in here. All right, I got a little bit carried away. Let's go ahead and move on to the next medium. All right, I'm gonna try the remaining materials on this colored pencil paper. So they're called Flexi Cali Creative by Manuscript. I'm not familiar with this brand, 
I don't know if you can see, the pen nib is really sharp. You see that? It's really thin and sharp. I think it's going to make really cool lettering. So I like this because you can get really, really thick lines and kind of like play with the thickness that you want your line to be. So I can see how this would be really cool for like comics or hand lettering. I'm super stoked about these. <laughs> how much should I pay for these? They were $2.50. Copic markers with the same edge are like $7 each, so really happy with this. And the really random bright green marker that I got is a cool surprise. And now you'll see on this paper, it actually didn't even bleed to the other side at all. I'm gonna go ahead and try out these hashtag coloring blending markers. So we're just gonna lay some color down. Really fine tip. So with this, it's kind of diluting the color that I already have down. Not sure how I feel about that. It also has a really, really strong smell. As if it soaked up all the color and then just died. <laughs> so maybe this one's broken. I'm gonna try the other one. They're more so like color diluters rather than blenders. But I do like the fine I do like the fine tip. I feel like I could get some cool effects with that, but the brush tip is just way too mushy. So when you press down, it's just breaking really quickly. These Prismacolor markers that I was really excited about, now I'm kind of scared because if the blending markers failed, hopefully these won't. So the kit I have before only came with the six, I believe. I'm not familiar with these, but they look like they might be brown fine liners, which is kind of cool. Yep. That's actually really awesome. I was not expecting that. This is my favorite one. It's very similar to the calligraphy markers in that it has an edge to it, but this is the marker that I used until it died. I am in love with this. And look, all of these seem to be in perfect working order. I'm really happy about that. And I actually prefer these over micron pens because you don't get that weird divot that you sometimes get with using microns. But yes, I am most excited about these. These are amazing, and I, again, will probably use them into the ground. And I got them for like 70% off. <laughs> and the last thing I'm gonna try is my refillable fountain pen and I'm gonna go ahead and put India ink in it. I hope that's the right thing to do. This is a little correction pen that it comes with. I'm not sure if it's just meant to correct, you know, obviously only blue mistakes. <laughs> Weird. So it's almost like an alcohol-based diluter and it's just taking the ink and lifting it, but you can't really erase it. So I guess if you made a tiny detail that was a mistake on an edge or something, you could clean it up with this, but it's not meant to be like, I can erase all the ink I want. Does this already have, oh, this already has an ink cartridge in it, I think. Yeah. Sweet. So this already came with one ink cartridge and then a refill. So I really like this as a pen and nib. This was definitely worth the dollar. I could draw all day with this thing and feel fancy. I really, really like it. I can put ink in this all day. I think I might have to buy the specific cartridges for it, which is different from what I was expecting. I thought I could just put my own ink in it, but I still really like it. Really happy about this purchase. And then last thing, since this is colored pencil paper, figured I should try some colored pencils on there and see how they blend. So right away, I'm really happy with the way that these blend on here. I'm used to the Canson Mixed Media paper that has a bit more of a grit to it, but this paper is really, really good for colored pencil. While I had it, I figured I'd try this blending marker on my colored pencil and see what happens. Yeah, it actually really deepened my colors and kind of blended them together. I don't use blending sticks for my colored pencil, so that might actually be a really cool alternative to that. Maybe that's what I was supposed to be using them on all along. Who knows, maybe they aren't even meant for markers. <laughs> Holy sh close that door. So some of these products worked out great and some of them not so great, but I got them all for about 20 bucks, so I think it was definitely worth the investment. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.